In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you what my child eats in a day. Yes, I am parenting a child with Down syndrome and she is pretty darn awesome. But when I approach meal times, I do approach it a little bit differently than I do my other kids. Well, sometimes I do. Sometimes I can take their food and mix it up. But in this video, I'm gonna show you what I do normally. So first thing to know, she is dairy free, she is gluten free, and we do limit her meat intake for certain reasons, I'm going to explain that later in the video. And because of the Down syndrome, we do run into some low tone, we run into some developmental issues as well as some sensory issues. So we do run into some struggles here and there, but honestly when it comes down to it, it's not that much different than when you just feed a regular toddler, but I am going to explain those differences as we go along in this video. My name is Leilani and this is our channel Living with Eve and I do hope that if you have a child with special needs or if you know someone who has a child with special needs that you do consider sharing this video with them and I do hope that you or they get tons of ideas out of this and some comfort and encouragement too to know that you're not alone. So go ahead, feel free to share and also consider subscribing to our channel if you like what you see. So let's just get started with breakfast. Super, super simple. We're gonna have some good old fashioned oatmeal cooked on the stove. Now with her, no matter what I make her, if I mix in applesauce, she's gonna eat it up no problem. Now nutrition is huge in our family, as it should be with any family. And because Naomi has Down syndrome, there are some things that go along with it. Like her immune system is going to be a little bit lower. And she does have some absorption problems and some other medical problems that go along with Down syndrome or may not go along with Down syndrome because every kid is different. I like to use a product by Dr. Morris. The one that I used this morning was Muscles by Nature. He has a ton of different products. And what I like about these products is that they are not only organic, but they're raw and they're basically just made up of fruits and some vegetables. Some fruits I haven't even heard of. There's some like crazy berries out there. You should totally check out the ingredients. I mix a half a scoop of that, stir it in, and that's about it with her breakfast. Now, getting her to eat, that's a whole nother issue. And I have a couple videos on that. I'll stick a link right up there. But if you have any ideas on how you get your toddler or child to eat, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below so we can learn from you as well. For snacks, fruit all the way. Grapes and bananas are her staple, but of course we've done other stuff like apples and pears and peaches and you name it, we've done it. Watermelon too, and when it's watermelon season. It's lunchtime, and along with my other kids' food, I have to also make Naomi's food. And I'm a really big fan of leftovers. So for lunch, we're gonna pull out some leftovers. Mmm, yummy, isn't it? Okay, so let me tell you what it is. So what I did do last night is I steamed some broccoli and some carrots and I puree that mixed in some strawberries as kind of a nice sweet base. And then I put uh, on top, I just poured in the rest of the stuff that I Vitamix, the um, oatmeal, which is all chopped up with the Vitamix. I'm gonna warm this up inside a glass container, inside the toaster oven, because I'm not a big fan of putting plastic inside the microwave. I'm also, I'm gonna add some chai seeds to get some omega-3s. One of the things that Naomi has struggled with is weight gain, so I just try to give her those really good fats, like avocado and chai seeds and flax seeds, as well as some nice, good, bulky fruits and vegetables. Anyway, let me show you how it works. Probably should have stored it in the glass container to start with instead of having to transfer it. Ugh, I dropped some on the floor. Right in the grout too, ugh. Now I gotta clean my grout. Let's go warm it up. I found the rest of her banana for breakfast, so I'm gonna go ahead and mush this into her broccoli. <laughs> So it's taking her a little bit longer to eat, mostly because the food consistency is a little more thicker than usual, but it's nice because it doesn't fall off the spoon and she can feed herself. It's taking about 40 minutes to feed her. She already wants something else. 
So I gave her a drink and her ice cake. Rice cakes are cheap and easy and filling and they're great. I also like to buy the organic kind so I don't feel that guilty. <laughs> Usually she doesn't really share, but today, yeah, I guess so. So now that we have lunch done, I am gonna start thinking about dinner. I'm gonna put together a sweet potato. I'm gonna go ahead and steam that, and then I'm gonna use some beans as well. Now it's time to make dinner. For her, applesauce and sweet potato are her go-to. Like I said, you put it in there, she'll eat whatever you give her. So we're gonna take out the sweet potatoes, which are still a little bit warm. Beans, black beans. I have a quarter of an avocado left. This is really good for some good fat. Speaking of fat, let's get some chai seeds. Voila. Now we're gonna mush it up. Do you want your water? No. Do you want your food? Yeah, you want your food. Okay, let's eat. Now I did mention earlier in the video that I don't usually feed Naomi meat too often. And there are a couple reasons for that. The first one is culturally, our family dynamics. We don't normally eat meat unless it's for a special occasion, big meal, family gatherings, which usually maybe happen two or three, maybe four times a month. The second reason is when you chew meat, that chewing is one of the last skills that you learn when it comes to your oral motor development. And Naomi's skills of chewing that meat aren't quite developed yet, unless I period. And if I do period, it still really takes a long time for her to chew. So once again, that's another reason why we don't normally feed her meat. Now, I am working on another video and that will be up very soon that's going to discuss picky eaters and what recipes that you can use to help them. Not just picky eaters, but eaters that struggle with sensory processing. But when that video gets up, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it right there. And if you're interested in some cool crock pot recipes, right there. If you're interested in Down syndrome, I'll add another one, right there. So consider subscribing so you can get some updates on us and you know what, we'll see you around.